I just got this rutan to act up and I ran inside to gear up the camera. Hopefully it will do it again. I don't know if you felt all that lurching, but it was surging and lurching and then it just killed the motor. It's a 2009 Volkswagen Rutan, which it's a car, it's a van, it's a caravan. Okay, I put a light on it and as you saw earlier when I demonstrated the problem, the, it kills the engine. And when I say it kills the engine, I don't mean the engine just died. It felt like it lurched as if the transmission uh, was killing the engine. Just like if you were driving a manual transmission car and it, you let out on the clutch too fast and it, you kill the engine. Uh, the torque converter clutch can behave that way. We've been seeing that ever since the inception of the torque converter clutch, usually due to a torque converter clutch sticking. So if I had a transmission problem, like killing the engine, the first thing I might want to do is check the transmission fluid. But when I go to check the transmission fluid on this car, there is no dipstick. What you need to check the transmission fluid on this is a special tool called a dipstick. And no, not that guy over there. That guy over there. <laughs> uh, even as I drove this car into the into the shop here, I it was chugging and jerking as if the torque converter clutch was applied. So it, it's it's entirely possible the torque converter clutch is stuck on. Um, if I had a transmission problem on a normal vehicle, the first thing I would want to do would be to check the transmission fluid. But on this vehicle. There is no dipstick. There is a tube. You need to check the fluid. What you need is a special tool called a dipstick. It's a part number 9336 and it's basically just a dipstick to check the fluid with. And luckily I have one. Coming from the transmission industry, I bought all this stuff. And I not only do I have the dipstick, I have instructions with the dipstick. Dipstick. But that's what it looks like. You stick it down in there, and at the correct temperature, there's a little graph. Let me show that to you. So here's the instructions that I got with my dipstick, and it does say Volkswagen Rutan, nine through eleven. So there's these different charts for different types of transmissions. And this is our transmission, a 62 TE. And so at this temperature, the fluid level should be at that millimeter reading. And so we'll check the temperature. Now, every time I've ever scanned a Rutan, I've just lied to it and called it a Dodge Caravan. And it's worked fine for me. I haven't run into any problems yet, but if you have, put a note in the comments down below we do have a 2009 it asked for automatic ID but then it asked me for what it is so caravan in I do have a caravan but my fifth digit is not in and and I do have a 3.8 now I am going to scan the transmission first. And I get some EGR trouble code and an EVAP trouble code. And 2763 torque converter clutch pressure control circuit high. We're going to keep that in mind, but we are going to check the fluid first. So we'll need the uh, transmission temperature. Now to check the fluid, you just use this dipstick like any other. You stick it in there until this bottoms out in the pan, and you take you make reference of your millimeter reading, and then you cross-reference it on your chart. Uh, with the temperature and if it's in the right range then you have then it's then it's full 
but as I'm sticking this one in here, I'm getting very little uh, fluid on this stick at all. The knob here may be getting a little bit wet, but the, I'm not getting anything on this stick at all. The knob, of course, is going to get wet because it's going down in the tube, which might have some fluid on the walls of the tube. But let me try one more time. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is nothing on this stick except for on that knob right there. So you don't diagnose transmissions that are low on fluid. So I'm going to fill this thing up and see if it changes our problem any. Um, I do know that these transmissions have some problems with the torque converter clutch sticking and that torque converter clutch is available by itself. You can buy that and replace it. So that may be what this car needs, but we don't do nothing with low fluid. Let's fill it up first and see where, so see what happens from there. So after adding a little over a quart, I'm now in the proper range. Uh, with regards to my temperature, I'm about 45 millimeters up. And so we'll go drive and see if it helped, it helped our issue any. If not, we'll continue with the diagnosis. Okay, so we're taking a look at the oil schematic, which shows how the valves are used and how the solenoids and clutch packs are used in the transmission. And as you can see here, you have a torque converter clutch control valve torque converter clutch switch valve. It says EMCC, EMCC solenoid and EMCC stands for electrically modulated converter clutch solenoid and this solenoid if you follow the red it's provided with pressure from the manual valve here only in drive so our problem only happens in drive so the reason it only happens in drive is because um, this solenoid is not provided with any oil when it's in reverse so this oil comes in through here and when this solenoid is switched on the light blue comes into effect and comes over here and it'll stroke this valve and this valve and that's why the torque converter clutch comes on. Um, the reason this car is malfunctioning this way is because it has this solenoid is sticking there's a little valve inside a solenoid and that valve is sticking in the on position allowing this pressure to come over here and stroke these valves when it's not supposed to be on. So I'm going to call this customer and recommend a torque converter clutch solenoid. We'll probably drop the pan and inspect, look for any excessive metal in there indicating the transmission failing. And hopefully the torque converter clutch solenoid will fix it. I don't do very many how-to videos, but this might be a good one for someone to watch a how-to on. So to start with, I'm going to uh, get this out of here. And this just raises up and it comes out. connector I've already got it partially released here but to release it you push down here and then press down here and it comes unplugged around the outside here there is a sound insulation cover here and it has these push lock connectors on here you basically pry those off or maybe you can rotate them sometimes and get them off but I'm not going to show that they're usually a struggle there's quite a few of them around the outside on almost every bolt so we'll have to take all those off we're down underneath this rattan and I'm looking at this exhaust pipe here we're going to pull this exhaust pipe out to make our life a little easier and you can see there there's a bolt there and a bolt there uh, on the bot on the bottom half at the rear of this pipe. Uh, the front is pretty easy to get to from the top, but we'll take that, that bolt out right there and that bolt right there. Just to let you know, pulling this pipe out was no easy task. The bottom bolts are difficult to get at. They were seized up because they are exhaust bolts. I had to heat them with a torch in order to get them out and not fun at all. Probably spent a good 45 minutes or more uh, trying to get those bolts out. But now we have it out of the way, and we can continue forward. Okay, whenever you do a repair like this, you want to remove the pan to make sure there isn't a significant amount of metal in the pan. We've already pulled the pan and changed the filter. This is the new filter. But you want to break open the old filter because they're real good at trapping components in there. Break open the old filter and see if there is any metal contamination trapped in there. We've already uh, removed the pan and cleaned it, but there was no significant metal in this one. 
And here is the old filter broken apart. There is some silicone inside it. Obviously somebody had a messy transmission service in here before, but no significant metal in there. And uh, so I think we're good to repair this one with just the solenoid. We did have to remove the bolt out of this bracket right here for the, to get some flex out of this C line. And there was another one right here in this bracket to get that AC line out of the way in order to have the room, room to get the cover off. This is the solenoid we're after right here. So it's a simple matter of removing that bolt, unplugging it to change that solenoid. Some of the solenoids are integrated in the solenoid pack, but the one we're after is right here and changeable by itself. So you don't have to change the solenoid pack. On top of the side cover, there was this tie strap here. It may, uh, that you had to cut in order to get it off, and we'll replace that with a new one. Here's a new solenoid. There's the part number if you need it. Okay, we have finished up with the work on this, and we're we have backed it out of the base already, but I wanted to show you that it was not killing the motor this time. I'm going to grab the shifter and put it in drive. And obviously the tachometer stayed running. Reverse. It wasn't killing the motor in reverse though, but back into drive. No problems at all. We'll take it for a short drive and I'll uh, update you after the drive. Working on this rutan was rather fun. Still not a tough diagnostic problem, but a neat fix. And I'm very glad we were able to help this customer by fixing their transmission when uh, another place recommended a transmission for an exorbitant amount of money. So it was a nice fix for them and for me. Uh, I enjoyed doing it because I used to be in the transmission industry and it's good to know I can still fix the transmission, although not a tough problem to fix. If you learned anything from this video, give a like and subscribe. And if you would like to contribute to the continued production of this video, find my website at www.kansascitytdi.com and click the donate button. Thanks for watching.